It is the middle of June. It is hot. COVID-19 has kind of thrown a wrench in a lot of stuff. Uh, but this is episode three of the Roller Skate Miata project. So in front of us here, you can see we have a nice shiny, well, somewhat shiny block. It is finally back from the machine shop. It is now an 81 mil bore block. Uh, we just got it back yesterday. It was hot tanked and me being all excited like a giddy little kid. Uh, already painted it and got it all ready to start putting back together. And on top of that, as you guys probably saw in the intro, we have these brand new Wiseco Pistons. Uh, so a very big thank you to Wiseco and the entire staff there. Uh, we managed to use a fairly off the shelf blank to make this custom piston. It is now a fully custom 81 mil bore piston. And, uh, yeah, for the most part, it's it's pretty off the shelf. We didn't have to go too crazy with it in order to get everything to work. Um, but this is a custom piston exclusively available at Burstcraft. Uh, for anyone that wants it, get in touch. Other than that, we're gonna cover a few things that have also happened in the meantime, since the last video. So we did pick up these 9B1A Mazda Speed camshafts. Um, these aren't anything from a Mazda Speed Miata like you might hear about here in the US. Uh, these are from Mazda Speed Japan. These were available in the 90s to the early 2000s as part of their aftermarket program. Um, they would sell you anything from little accessories for your car, anything to a full B-spec, C-spec race engine. Uh, they did engines for Formula 4 cars, a whole variety of things really. Um, so 9B1A cams were somewhere in the B package lineup. I believe it was B package spec two or stage two. Um, they are a 256 degree duration cam with 8.5 millimeters of lift, which is a little bit more aggressive than OEM. Uh, OEM on the 1.6 liter is around a 236 and 7.8 mil of lift, somewhere in that realm. Um, so a good bump up, but still reasonably OEM, uh, nothing super crazy where you're losing bottom end, um, but definitely a cam that reading the few people that do have them really makes the 1.6 liter shine in the mid range. And we're hoping that it really helps come 1.7. Uh, the other thing that you've probably seen in videos prior are these Maruha adjustable cam gears. So because we have the change in profile on our camshafts, we decided not only because honestly, these look really cool and they're kind of rare and I have a thing for rare parts as you guys have already seen. Um, but just for the sake of function, we went ahead and got these a while back. Um, engines can be adjustable in terms of their mechanical timing, uh, not only with an adjustable cam gear like this, but if you have an oil pressure based system for va variable valve timing, you can also do adjustments there. However, this is a motor from the late 80s, early 90s, and so we're left with just mechanical timing. So uh, what these gears do, allow it allows you to change your, uh, not only your position of your cam in relation to the timing of the crank, but also your valve overlap. So that is basically how your intake and exhaust cam, in a way, communicate with each other. Um, so, they do have their own independent cycles, but overlap is basically um, the amount in degrees of when those two cycles actually overlap. So you can have situations where you have no valve overlap, and that would be either zero degrees, or if you wanna put an actual degree number to it in terms of the space where they don't overlap, uh, that is obviously plausible. Uh, but a lot of the times you'll hear a certain quantity in degrees of valve overlap. A really common one for Miatas that I tend to hear uh, for 264 cams that a lot of people run is about 15 degrees of overlap. 
And so what that basically is, is as your intake valve and your exhaust valve are moving up and down respectively, you'll have a period of time in that 360 degrees of rotation in which both valves will be in some form of movement, whether that will be opening or closing. Um, obviously that depends on a variety of factors on which is opening, which is closing. Uh, and I won't really get into that just to keep this really, really simple. Obviously for those of you that have put together engines before, especially performance engines, uh, this is a walk in the park for you. You've already heard all this. So it's pretty much a, a really dumbed down review. Um, but I just wanted to go over the basics really quick, just so everyone who follows this that might not have the level of experience that some of the rest of us do can really understand what's going on. Um, obviously if you guys have any questions or any comments or concerns, like feel free to voice them. I love answering questions. I love discussion. Um, but I also like to make sure that people don't think motors are black magic. At the end of the day, these things have been around since the turn of the century. And there's no reason for you to be scared of, of some hunks of metal. So if we all have a general understanding of what's going on, it not only makes it more comfortable for you as a driver, knowing what's going on in front of you or behind you for you Porsche people and MRS people and all that. Um, but it, in a way it helps you as a driver too, because you know if something's going wrong, wrong what it could possibly be. Um, obviously it makes it nicer on your wallet too, if you know what's going on and how to fix it and things like that. But there's no reason, especially in this day and age with the internet for everyone to look at an engine and just not want to touch it. Uh, obviously use your own discretion. Uh, no one to seek the help of a professional. There's no need for you to spend thousands of dollars trying to do it yourself to then blow it up moments later. Um, but there are certain tasks that you shouldn't have any problem taking on your own. Um, especially if you have a Miata, these things are pretty simple. Um, I'm obviously no wizard at all this, but I at least have a little bit of a, a knack when it comes to these things. Um, outside of that, I think we're going to leave it on here today. Uh, like I said before, you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to voice them in the comments, reach out to us directly, Facebook, Instagram, email. Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, if you guys want to get any of the pistons that we just showed off, uh, feel free to shoot us a message as well. These are something that will be available through our store. Um, but they do have a lead time of a couple months to actually produce. So get in touch, let us know. Uh, other than that, if you feel like subscribing, feel free. There is no pressure here. Uh, we do this for fun. We do this for pleasure. Um, and to keep you guys informed, up to date, and just a way to archive this project. But anyway, guys, thank you once again for stopping by and enjoy the visuals.